and gentlemen, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Welcome back to another episode of the shoddy shoddy podcast that all the ballers love. It's the unproductive nerds. Uh, now, ori- originally, <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on. Uh, yeah, we um we straight tripping up in here, dog. Anyway, we were originally. What the fuck are you doing? We were originally going to have another Bala on stage, um, good, a good friend of ours called James, but unfortunately he couldn't come, so it's just going to be a two-man podcast today, which means he can probably turn it off now. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. If you're still with us, today we're going to be... Ca- um, if you're still with us, you have very low standards in podcast choice. Continue. And probably relationships. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> relationships. Yeah. You know what? You're such a piece of shit for listening to this. You've got terrible choice in men if we're your pick. Exactly. Like, oh my, look at me. You can't, but... <laughs> we're, we're, in a, we're in a strictly non-visual medium. But yeah, look at John. Yeah, like, you can tell by the sound of my voice. Jesus, what's wrong with you? Anyway, if but... you're still with us, today, we're going to be doing um, pitching. Or, uh, we're going to be doing pitching. We're going to be doing pitching. And what we're pitching is the next Kingsman movie. Kingsman 3, if you will. Wait, no, I, I will. Oh, that will you? I, 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 I do. I sure hope so. Oh, no. All right. I, I think this was a good start. I really, I really missed, I missed my cue. And I thought, I didn't know if you were throwing a bit to me or if you were just going to keep going. Or, or, oh, boy. No, I was just going for a reaction shot. But because this is, again, a non-visual medium, I needed a sort of, huh? <laughs> Boing! Sort of. For the, for Think those, of that sound effect. Yeah, for those of you at home, he did a, he did a real wacky head turn as if he was looking to the camera. Yeah, except Jack was my camera because I have no camera to look at. Since we are now strictly an audio-based medium, once again. <laughs> yep, because someone couldn't edit a single episode. Yeah, fucking Dan, am I right? Uh-huh. Without changing the entire format of the show. What a dickhead. Uh-huh. And on that note, I'm going to close that window. On that man, on that note. On that man. On on that man. Shall we get the Kingsman? <laughs> More like the that man. Just Am I your... right? Anyway. <laughs> Just do your fucking pitch, man. For Christ's sake. Oh no! Would you like to begin? Me? Yes. <laughs> me of all people, really? Yes. Me? I like your I like your pitch. I think I I hope the others will like it as well. And by the others, I mean the audience. Audience, you're our real friends. All three of you. Sometimes seven, but I think two of them are me. <laughs> two of them. I watch it twice. I don't know why, but when you said two of them, I pictured you like with a phone in one hand and watching it on a computer at the same time. Like, like... While masturbating, yeah. 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 It's every time... <laughs> Hands-free masturbating. Every time, every time you make a joke, you climax. Yeah. It's just, oh, oh, there's nothing I like better than the sound of my own voice. I'm just trying to fill the space right oh, now. Oh, yeah. All right. Shall I go with my pitch? All right. Ready? Yep. Me loading. Okay. Mm, we work much better as a three-man podcast, which yeah. means because when we're three-man, I don't have to talk as much. You know, it's weird. Uh, anytime I've done the two-man show, which isn't often, normally I can come up with shit to say, but because it's literally been five, five minutes ago is when we found out we were only going to be the two of us. We were going to be a duo instead of a true... A, Trio. A trio. Jesus Christ. So I'm really struggling to come up with my pitch here, so stall it for time. John, you want to give your pitch for now? It's a real shame, because I would have been interested to see what James would have pitched. But with any luck, he'll be in the next uh, two episodes time. He'll be back. The fourth episode for now, because we don't pre-record these or anything. Not at all. Not at all. Holy shit, we're only three and a half minutes in. And any accusation of pre-recording, you know what I call that? Treason. Somebody say treason. It's treason, then. Alright, hang on, let me just... <clears throat> Do it. Now, Jack, would you like to Execute go with your... Execute order 66. It will be done, my lord. <laughs> okay, I went kind of Game of Thrones. Yeah, there. you reset like, like a fucking hem. I went into that hoping to do a New Zealand accent, but it's wait, not how it turned Wait, 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 slow down, for Christ's sake. What, what do you mean they blew it up? <laughs> wait, no, no. No, we cannot just build another one. So then I threw the Senate at him. The whole Senate! <laughs> oh, Palpatine, you're so crazy. What, what do you want me to do with your hair? Anyway, all right. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. It got kind of out of control. Oh, so we're referencing Robot Chicken right there. Yeah, fuck. Robot Chicken stars. I feel like 90% of our jokes are just us rolling into things we've already seen and referencing them. Yeah. That is literally all we do. 
I mean, originality is for people who make the things we reference, and those yeah. guys are geeks. Fucking nerds. Uh, Seth MacFarlane, you want to continue using your stupid comedy cartoon to shove your political opinions down people's throat, you piece of shit? Hey, Seth MacFarlane, I have a pitch for you, actually. So it's about this um, white-collar American father living in the suburbs with his wacky family. What's that? You already have three shows like that? Wait, no, four? Oh, you want to do another one? Okay, he's going to buy the pitch off me anyway. Oh, no, this one's different because they have a talking thing that isn't supposed to talk. That's great. This, this time they have a talking parish. Wow. Oh, jeez, Jeezy Mac. And the dad's an overweight alcoholic. Never heard of that one before. Oh, he's also super violent. Oh, my God. But yeah. everybody disregards this. It's fine. Okay, do you, want, do you want to do your pitch while I try and come up with one? Malcolm in the Middle is a great show. It is Malcolm so in the Middle is the show that broke that format. You know what? You know what? Fuck the Kingsman. Let's just do. Let's just talk about shit we like for for a while. Yeah, I think that's the entire point of the show. I'll I'll get to my pitch in a second. Don't worry. But yeah, we got time to fill. So you know, Malcolm in the Middle has a very special place in my heart. What's your favorite episode of Malcolm in the Middle? That's a very difficult question to answer, but I'll try to see what if I can. I got two candidates. Okay. N number one, there's one episode where they do a split timeline. Oh, where, is that the bowling alley? The yeah. bowling alley, alley oh. episode. It's an episode where they go bowling and how what? things would be different if. Hal took them, or if Hal Lois took, took them. them. Yep. If Hal takes them, then things get out of control because Hal is just completely focused on the bowling himself, and if Lois takes them, then Lois just gets... Super really... overprotective. And yeah, super overbearing. And it's just such a great episode because it keeps coming back to Hal and his bowling, and he plays a, he plays he, a near-perfect game. He misses out at the very last second because Malcolm sneaks away with a girl, gets his shirt caught in the uh, thing that replaces the bowling pins. So just as he's about to score his final strike, Malcolm comes out and knocks them. Which makes it a foul. Yeah. They disregard his uh, perfect score. And Hal's turning around with tears in his eyes. He's going, <laughs> three, oh, oh, three, oh, oh. And everyone's just walking Did away from him. Did this come out before the episode of The Simpsons where Homer played a perfect game? I feel like it might Oh, have. I couldn't tell you. I ha I have to only imagine it did. Because they feel like they were around the same time when Homer played his 300 game. Mm. They got that fun little balloon. It was great. Uh, Personally, my favorite episode, and it took a lot to come up with this, but I genuinely think it's the... um. The episode where Hal takes up speed walking. Oh, that's and such he, a great episode. He makes a rival in the park, and they're like, "Oh, you can't, have, you can't out speed race this guy." And basically, the premise is, and they're wearing these ridiculous outfits with the huge aerodynamic oh, like cool. xenomorph helmets, and like the the, the yeah, the, Hal's the, like in a right a blue bodysuit, and the other guy's like in flaming hot like yellow and red. And the rule is basically, you, you have to have one foot on the ground at all time, or else it's not speed walking. And at the very end, it's a tie, and they're like, "Oh no, Hal, you lost!" And then they look at the photo replay of it, and the guy has his heel off the floor so Hal wins by a technicality yeah they go into, they have like a court meeting oh. and like, Hal confronts him and he's like you're no speed walker sir you're a jogger and everyone like screams how good is Brian Cranston like genuinely the he's man is so good I actually have three candidates for a favorite episode. Number two, the wedding episode, which mainly for the ending sequence where basically... What, uh, wait, what wedding episode? Uh, they go to the wedding of Hal's, like, brother, I think. I do not remember this episode. Oh, wait, yes, I do, I do. They all hate Lois. Yeah. And, oh, Hal's dad is played by Doc from Back to the Future. Oh my god, it's Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, Chris it? Christopher Lloyd is Brian Cranston's dad, and they think that um, Hal never talks to his dad, because whenever he tries to open up emotionally, his dad just tickles him. So he, like, puts on all of the clothes he owns, walks into the thing, and just confronts his dad. And his dad keeps trying to tickle him, but it just can't get through the clothing, and Brian Cranston forces him to, like, connect with him emotionally. Where the rest of Hal's shitty family, like, makes Lois cry, because they yeah. keep bullying her and, like, playing mean tricks on her. So all of the boys, what they do is they get um, a golf cart, drive it along the wedding feast, destroy the entire thing, ruin the um, wedding cake and the, the bride's wedding dress, and then just drive the golf cart into a swimming pool. And there's this beautiful shot of all of them just sinking into the water, and they all have these serene smiles oh. on their faces. Alright, uh, what about the episode, another personal favor, the episode where it's Lois's birthday, and she just gives him $20 to buy her a present. And they buy her, like, a dollar's worth of stuff and spend the rest on candy. Mm. So she, like, storms off to a batting cage. And the whole family's come down to meet her. So, like, Francis has come back with his new Nigerian girlfriend. Hal's back. You Everyone... mean Native American? No, she's from Nigeria in this. Who are you talking about? No, it's it, she's a one-off character. Oh, okay. He meets her on a bus, they're on a tour of America. I can't even remember her. Okay. Anyways, I thought you were talking about Piyama. No, it's not Piyama. Anyway, um, they come back, and she storms off, so they have to go chase her down to the batting cage where she's just knocking home runs all the time, or whatever you could do in a batting cage. And there's this... I, you can't really hit home runs in a cage, but They okay. steal a birthday cake from this kid, carve Lois into it, and try and bring it to her. 
and they trip over a clown and then they hire the clown they're like hey can you help us try and win win my wife back over she's real sore and the clown accidentally insults lois so the boys start beating up on the clown hal like punches this clown so francis dewey fucking malcolm and reese all get involved in this clown fight and all of a sudden they turn and there's several other birthday clowns just coming around the corner and I don't remember, but I like to imagine they There's all... a brawl scene, isn't there? They, I like to imagine they all piled out of a tiny car, <laughs> ran towards them, and there's just a, a brawl scene between the boys and these clowns as they beat the shit out of Hal. And Lois just sits there lovingly staring at them, just like, wow, they really are my guy. And the clowns are just beating the hell out of them. And it's all in slow motion. It's so funny. I now remember that episode. Yeah. How good of an episode is that? And finally, and I, I think I won't even need to to describe this one. All I have to say is the best episode of the show, roller skating. Roller skating. Roller skating. And on that note, I've been Jack. He's been John. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have now, a lovely week. And now on to the Kingsman pitches. Don't don't click off. That was a joke. Don't. You've, you've done that joke twice this episode. Now, <laughs> when the episode actually ends, people won't believe you. You know, when we get to the end of the episode, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to, like, press the button to call it there. Yeah. This is a bit. They're doing a bit. This is just a gag. That's any, minute, any minute now. They're any right minute. Back. And then you know, your next podcast comes up. Anyway, I'd like to take a moment to talk about our sponsor today, Giraffes. Giraffes. I don't get... Why do you keep doing that as a bit? Because we've got so many We've got so many podcasts we listen to where they're always like, and now we'd like to talk... And now we'd like to talk about our sponsor, Harry Shaver's cream. Buying raises is just such a pain in the ass. Why not have them sent out to you? And while we're on the subject... Audible. <laughs> because those fuckers will sponsor anyone. Now tell me, my good sir, have you heard of Casper Mattress? <laughs> Let's just get them all out of Yes! <laughs> now let me, let me describe to you the contents of my loot crate. <laughs> That's another one. I hate when people do loot crates. Oh, or Nick Mason, tell me what, what's, in the, what's in the loot crate? Well, James, I've got a bloody t-shirt. I've got a... I got a didgeridoo. I got I got a little Harley Quinn Q fig. Oh, what's that, Jack's Films? You want to take two and a half minutes out of this five minute video to talk about Audible and your merchandise? Oh, that's fucking great! I hope you're having a good time with that, buddy. No, Kevin Smith. I don't want to continue the conversation with Jim Lee. Let's talk about the Dave School instead, the highest school for film and animation. Hey, Internet Comment Etiquette. Good job of not like taking anyone to sponsor you. You've got morals. Good on you. Good man. <laughs> And on that oh, note... Oh, yeah, plug, by the way. If you haven't watched Internet Comment Etiquette, he's way funnier than us. You should go watch him. It's real good. This whole episode, I'm just going to title it Shit That's Funnier Than Us, Go Watch That. Yep. Because genuinely, it's a lot of what this is. And, and so far, we're on Internet Comment Etiquette and Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> okay, so... One sec, one sec. Can we talk... Can we just do an episode on Malcolm in the Middle? Because fuck, screw Kingsman. Malcolm's so, someday we're gonna... That's, that's going to be my new thing now. Instead of asking for a Kingsman episode, I'm just going to keep going. Can we do a Malcolm in the Middle episode, you guys? Can we just, can we track how serial killery Craig was? That man yeah. was very serial killery. He, he was mentally ill. Poor I, guy. I like to imagine he had a little shrine at home. Another favorite episode, the one where Craig is at home because he's injured and he's taken hostage by his helper monkey. <laughs> <laughs> when the helper monkey keeps trying to kill him. That's so funny. Yeah. When they, like he keep like he, the helper monkey keeps trying to poison his food and shit, and he keeps thinking it's an accident, but then he finds out the helper monkey's like watching it with like hatred in its eyes. Actually, uh, another episode, and fuck, we're just describing Malcolm in the Middle episodes. But how great is that episode where Lois gets Malcolm the job at the store? Uh, yeah, that was a really long like arc. Yeah, when, when he first gets the job. When he first gets the job, and there's this girl at the store he's trying to impress, and he's like, he notices because Malcolm's lost smart than every other character, and he notices every except Dewey. Except Dewey. There's a, there's a, yeah, but Dewey's smart in another way. He's like piano and fucking art's kind of smart. But he's anyway. also like a regular genius who's just neglected. Really? Yeah. Anyway, um, he, he looks around and he's like, yeah, no, there's items go missing, but they just leave cash on the shelves. And it's only happening at this certain time at night. And, and fuck. And he looks at the tapes for like two in the morning and he sees. There's a guy living in the store! There's a guy climbs out of one of the fucking. He climbs from like the milk section. And he's got like a little ball pit in front of where he's hiding. And he's like, okay, okay, you could you could wrap me out and kick me out of the store, kid, that's fine. Or, or I could tell you everything I've eavesdropped about that girl. I could tell you all the things she's interested in because I've been listening to everyone in this store. So, I know everything about everyone. So Malcolm goes on to get help from this guy, except the girl eventually finds it really creepy. Like, that he knows everything about wait, her. Wait, are you, are you stalking me? Yeah. How, do you, how do you know? 
Oh god! I, I quit. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, how, how does that end? I feel like it ends with Craig kicking that guy out. I can't remember. Because I know there's a whole bit about Craig's like, you know what, Malcolm, I think you were right about all this food, so I'm going to look at it. He's like, no, 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 don't look into it. It's fine, it's fine. There's nobody living in the store or anything. What, what are you talking about? Get out, Craig. How you doing, boy? <laughs> or, the, or the episode where the, the stilt walker guy who introduces people to the store, he gets fired because he's an alcoholic. And then Malcolm gets his job, but he comes back with a pair of homemade stilts, and they get into a stilt fight, and he just kicks the shit out of Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> or what about the episode where Reese is supposed to fight? Oh, who's that little black kid in the wheelchair? Oh my god, the one where he's fighting uh, Stewie. Stewie. And Stewie like, feels like an, an armored suit. Like, Dark Knight Returns is how to fight Reese. Or, like, the bit where, um, uh, the episode where Dewey pisses off Reese the shit then, and Reese throws a punch at him, and then pulls the punch at the last second, and all day he just barely, like, taps uh, Reese, uh, Stewie in the nose. He just taps Stewie in the nose, and Stewie smiles at him, and then throws himself out of his wheelchair, oh. and Emma starts going, Oh my god, Reese hit the cripple kid! He fight clubs himself. Yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. You know what, I'd love, even as a one-off special, I'd love another episode of Malcolm in the Middle to see where those characters are now. Because mm. <sighs> how does that end? It ends with, he's supposed to get a scholarship to a certain school or to like a business course, and the family fucks with it, and the reveal is, yeah, you've been just blowing our expectations so long, we want you to go on and be president, and mm. won't accept anything less from you. Mm. That's how it ends, right? Uh, Lois that. gets pregnant again. I forgot she got pregnant in that series. That's a big thing for a season, isn't it? Her and baby Jamie. Yep. Oh, fuck. Who has, like, insane strength somehow. Yeah. So at one stage, he drops his, like, his, like, binky, and she goes to get it, and he, like, drops a shelf on her. Or, like, a book. On oh, the episode where he keeps trying to kill her. Yeah. There are some great episodes about, like, in, a, in like, harmless things trying to kill people in oh. that show. All right, Jamie or the monkey? Who wins that fight? Oh, Jamie. Ah, oh, true. Jamie's one of the Malcolm's family. And, like, there's this big thing in the show that they eventually touch on is all of the kids are geniuses just in different ways. Yeah, no, even Francis, like, when it comes to business stuff, isn't exactly. Good, he's got a Exactly. He's, he's got a mind for business and a great work ethic. Yeah. Uh, Reese, culinary genius. Yeah. Dewey's great with music. Um, Malcolm is great with, like, academia. Yeah. And we never find out what Jamie's good at. Yeah. Fucking good show. Well, we are 17 minutes in and we have not touched on Kingsman. This is a Kingsman episode, you guys. Kings, Kings, you guys? You guys. It's Kingsman, you We're guys. We're doing Kingsman. All right, um, Mom, so, I'm doing Kingsman. Stop trying to harsh my groove. I don't need a job. I'm doing Kingsman. Ma. Oh, okay. Ma. Oh, my God. Right, Get out of my room. I'm playing Minecraft. I just bought Minecraft last night for the Switch. I know you did, buddy. Yeah, I know you did. And on that note, what do you think of the first Kingsman? Um, actually, the first half of it is actually a little bit cliche. It's sort of men in blacky. It's got good presentation, mm. but it doesn't hit many original beats. It's I, just really stylish and well done. I think I let that go because I feel like it's almost intentional. Yeah. I feel like it's like we're doing a training montage because that's what they do with yeah. these things. The first 20 minutes is solid fucking gold. It has oh, an God. amazing intro. And I think, you know your man, um, Norrington from Pirates of the Caribbean? He yes, gets yeah. killed by Gazelle in the first scene. I wanted to see more of him. Oh, when she just like slices, when he catches the whiskey. And then he gets cut in half. Sliced in half. He was great. I wanted to see more of Admiral oh. Norrington. Oh. But anyway, it has a solid fucking gold first, like, 20 minutes, half an hour. Mm. The training sequence is a little bit boring. You and know then what? I it enjoy it. And then it picks up into high gear as soon as we hit the church scene. Oh, fuck. That church scene is the highlight of the whole movie for me. Yeah. Like, genuinely, they go in there. It's supposed to be. That scene's incredible. Oh, but thanks. I don't care. Uh, they go in there, and you see... They, we've set up already that this virus by Samuel... It's not virus. It's... Uh, noise. The, the sound virus by Samuel Jackson... Uh, triggers a part of your brain that induces rage and violence. So we've set up throughout the movie, he can drive anybody angry, depending on how high he turns it up. And then he puts uh, Colin Firth into the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> uh, they turn he... on the phones, and Colin Firth kills everyone in that room. And I love how they have to contrive it, that these guys are racists and homophobes and all that, just so you feel completely fine to see him murder a church full of people. And there's like, there's like, a hundred people in that room, and he kills about fifty of them. Oh fuck! And when Matthew Vaughn just like goes to that over the shoulder shot, and then it switches back and he's turning, it's all like one take as well. Fuck, it's so good. Well, there are some cuts, but it's like not the, many. Mostly, it's to cut to reaction shots by Iggy or like Sam Jackson. Yeah. And I love the fact it's so funny that Sam Jackson says this all. He's like, "No, no, I can't, I can't watch this. I can't. It's too violent. Yeah, I can't watch I, this." I like how they keep his phobia of blood throughout the entire thing. So funny. Like they never. 
I thought I would get sick of Sam Jackson on the list. I thought he'd be like, get these motherfucking snakes off my motherfucking airplane. It's just plain. So fucking funny. Yeah. Oh my god. It, it's always funny. That bit always works. And you know, I think I realized something after watching Kingsman is I don't think I've ever seen Colin Firth do a fight scene before. But he does them so believably. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you even see Bridget Jones' diary? He has some. He has several slap fights in that, and they're adorable every time. I think he throws a man through like the windows of a restaurant or a bra- or a bakery at some point. You just dropped so much in my estimation of the human being. But anyway, it's not like I sat down to watch. It was just on. Oh yeah, sure. It was just on. It was just on. no. But there's this great moment. How many episodes of Gossip Girl have you watched? Actually, I had I had a conversation about this yesterday with someone, where um basically I'm in like, short story away from Kingsman. I'm in the computer room and I walk in on this. Uh, girl. This is still a Kingsman episode. This is a Kingsman. I'll get We're twenty minutes in. Still haven't done the pitches. We're getting there. Don't worry. We're, we're getting there. We're, we're not stalling or anything. So I go into this computer room. It's my day off, but I gotta come in and work anyway. Like in a lot of college work. And I'm like, hey, you mind if I just not class? She's like, no, but you mind if I work here? She's like, yeah, no, I don't own the room. Work away. I'm like, cool, cool. I'm like, what are you watching? And she's trying to type up her thing, but she's like. Yeah, no, I've been at this for an hour and a half, and I've just given up and started watching Gossip Girl. I'm like, is it any good, or is it worth watching? She's like, no, not at all. I'm like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, it's complete trash. I'm also 90 episodes in. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, all right. And she's like, yeah, no, it's the most 90s thing you'll ever see sent in the 2000s. I'm like, oh, now you're selling it to me. Oh, boy, if, if somebody calls themselves the real Slim Shady or has, like, a backwards hat, I'm on board. But, yeah, no, I'm never watching that show. Mm-hmm. I know you already have, you son of a bitch. But anyway. How do you know? <laughs> anyway, uh, fuck, um, back to Kingsman. Uh, what, well, we're doing a Kingsman episode? Yeah, gee whiz, let's do a Kingsman episode. We should put a, remember to put a timestamp in the description <laughs> as to when we actually start doing the pitches. There's going to be nine Kingsman timestamps where we talk about Kingsman for a minute then went on to something else. Yeah, huh? Oh, fuck. <sighs> All right, uh, Kingsman. For those of you not in the know, uh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit late for that. Not, it was a movie bi- directed by Matthew Vaughn, based on the book by Mark Millar. Thank you. Are you not gonna do the Millar? Oh, the, actually. Anytime, anytime. Usually you call him Mark Miller, and that's because like, it's his name. But you correct me to the wrong thing every yeah, I'm, time. I'm not gonna correct you when you're right. You I'm say, not wrong. You say Mark Miller, and I go Millar. It's Mark Millar. It's. But uh, when you call him Miller... That's I'm his name. His name is Mark Miller. No, it's Mark Millar. But when you call him Miller, I'm going to correct you. Not when you call him Millar. Hello there. My, my name is Mark Millar. <laughs> if he said that, he'd get more jobs. He just, uh, hello there. I'm, I'd like to work for Mr. DC Marvel Comics, the Dark Horse. Uh, my name is Mark Millar. And like his eyes roll back into his head. His mouth opens wide like Pennywise. Just Millar. And next up on stage... And you just see the dead lights in the back of his throat. <laughs> Millar. I like to imagine he vomit. He's like, "Gee whiz, Mr. Millar, can I get a copy of the? Can I get a copy of Kickass off you?" It's Millar, and his mouth opens and he vomits up a signed copy of Kickass. He's like, "There you go, child. Enjoy." He just, he, he just like he's in a storm drain. Just come on, Georgie. Don't you want your copy of Kickass Volume Three? <laughs> oh my! Oh yeah, I really do want that, Mr. Miller. It's Millar, Georgie. They all fight down here. Come on, Georgie. Take the book. Take the book. He reaches in and just... Autograph time! And just grabs him and drags him into the storm drain. <laughs> you know, that's actually how he got his job at Image. He just traps the kids and the guys in the higher up. Yeah, he just walks in. Where's the CEO? Oh, he went for a walk somewhere. He's just picking bits of tie out of his teeth. to. <laughs> Oh, fuck. And, and anyway, so yeah, it, it was a movie that came out in 2015? <laughs> oh my god. You know Mark Millar? He's just, you know, he's Millar, such, yes. You know, I, I loved him back when he was doing his old stuff, but now he's just a... He's such a sellout, you know? He's oh, so fake. Oh. And the hero knocking the... I'm not real enough for you, Billy! I was real enough for Georgie! <laughs> you know what? It sounds like an amazing movie, right? I'm going to pitch it right now instead of my Kingsman pitch. <laughs> it's the adventures of Mark Millar making his way through the comics industry. like As Pennywise the Clown. As Pennywise the Clown. But like, imagine American Psycho, but set in the image offices. And he's just walking around in clown makeup. Yeah, and no, it's like, Jim Lee walks in, he's like, hey, where'd, where'd, my, where'd, my, where'd my desk go? And it's just Mark Millar posing as a table. <laughs> he's like, 
oh, this is, this, is, this is a weird drawing desk. And all of a sudden, Mark Miller turns to him and he's like, why wasn't I invited to image, Jimmy boy? Why wasn't I invited? Then just slowly starts to eat Jim Lee. He's, the mouth opens up like a fucking Venus flytrap. <laughs> but imagine just American Psycho but with Mark Millar's Pennywise. Alright, Kingsman. John, pitch us your Kingsman 2. The moment you've all been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. One oh, thing first. Mar- 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 Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner is... Is he still alive? I, I yes, like, he's still alive. We, we touched I, on this. I feel like I ask this every episode, but... Kevin, Co- Kevin Costner isn't even that old. He's fine. He's like 90. When do you think Waterworld came out? He's fine. No, Kevin Costner is like... He's in like his six, s- 60s at most. When did... 61? Like, is that when Waterworld came out? When did Waterworld come out? The 90s, Jack. What? When the fuck do you think Waterworld came out? I'm going to be honest with you. I genuinely thought Waterworld came out between Planet of the Apes and Thunderdome. I felt like it was in that time. When do you think Thunderdome came out? How old do you think Mel Gibson is? You know what? I think we should just move on right now. Because... When do you... How how long do you think people live? (laughs) Too long. (laughs) That's the end. I like to imagine Ra- Mel Gibson is like a racist I, version of, of Rachel Ghoul. Have you ever watched movies from the 60s? They're like noticeably from the 60s. You wouldn't think, oh, this came out in like 1942. And similarly, you wouldn't watch a film in the 1980s and go, oh, this came out in 1962, if you know what those two things. You know what? It's fine. fine this fine. is definitely a symptom of something. Uh, something wrong with you as a human being. <laughs> but we're going to move on. There's plenty wrong. Oh, nice little mm-hmm. Arkham City there. Little, 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 little bit of Hamill in there. Get, get a little bit of Hamill in you guys. What do you have to do? That was many things, but that, that was Porky Pig. A little bit of, little bit of Hamill in your diet. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's kill the Batman. <laughs> let's get, kill the Batman. Oh, the Cape Crusader. <laughs> How funny is it to imagine he kicks Batman down? Wait, no, wait, I did that gag wrong. He's supposed to do the hard one first and then do the simple. He went from Batman to the easier one is Cape the Crusade. Okay, go on. Imagine Porky Pig and he's got Batman. He pulls the gun on him and he gets in close and he whispers in his ear. That's all, detective. Blows his brains. There's nothing I like more than killing pigs. It's vigilante hunting season. Be very, very quiet. That's Deadshot. I know. No. <laughs> Del- Deadshot is a, It's just Elmer Fudd. Fudd with the eye patch. <laughs> Be very, very quiet. We're hunting pigs. <laughs> We're 27 minutes in. We haven't gotten to the king's yet. Be very quiet. We're whacking mobsters. <laughs> oh, no, fuck. Imagine Elmer Fudd. <laughs> But he's Red Hood. <laughs> he's got the big red helmet on. Of all, all the people you will kill, all the graveyards he's filled because you the wouldn't Fuentes kill him. he's crippled. <laughs> You're a ha- oh, sh- Be very quiet. We're hunting half measures. <laughs> What's up, detective? Oh yeah, and Bugs Bunny is Joker in this. Oh yeah, he just he's just showing up again. Yeah, I'm gonna need a couple guys. Not these guys, cause I, yeah, they're sorta of dead. Suckle and suck it, Tads. He murdered my man. That's Black Mass. <laughs> he's just he's just sitting there watching all the guys like bleed out around, like when he's in the truck when it's starting to catch fire. Just suffer and suck a tash. I think I saw a putty bat. I did. I did see a putty bat. That would actually be a better Joker. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. Let's okay, enough about our DC Looney Tunes, <laughs> which is a thing that happened already. No. Have you ever seen that event? No. There's... We'll but, get to Kingsman. But look, yeah, earlier in this year, there was an event where the Looney Tunes met the DC Universe. I did hear about it. And there was another one with the Power Rangers. Wasn't yeah. It? So there's Power Rangers vs. Justice League, which is good, but you haven't read a good story till you've read... You know the Batman character, Silver St. Cloud? I do. Well, she's having a romance with both Elmer Fudd and Bruce Wayne. That is the worst thing I've ever heard. But... Oh! You did tell me about this. Wasn't there something that the Looney Tunes are all weird and anthropomorphic? Yes, it's they're so like, creepy. They look like regular people. Like yeah, animals. I think, oh, I think, like, fucking Hugo Strange creates them or something like that. But basically, Elmer Fudd finds out that Silver St. Clouds have murdered son of Batman. 
and they're both investigating it. So Elmer Fudd's going through the criminal underworld like Rorschach self, taking fuckers out to find out who killed his girlfriend. And the reveal is that it was hired by Bruce Wayne. And then he's like, Bruce Wayne hunts down Elmer Fudd, and Elmer Fudd hunts down Bruce Wayne. And the reveal is Silver St. Cloud faked her death just to get away from both guys. So she'd have the world's greatest marksman take on the Dark Knight. Which in this scenario is Batman versus Elmer Fudd. It's so fucking stupid. I love it. That is actually the best thing I've ever heard. Isn't it? It's, it's way better than the Wonder Woman story where she's like, for the trials of the Amazon to be queen, you gotta fight three mystical beasts inside the labyrinth. And one of them is the Tasmanian Devil. She fights the Medusa, the Minotaur, and the Tasmanian Devil. Okay, Kingsman, I'm sorry. I'm done now. That's it. Now, the one thing I am really excited about today is I finally get to pitch something while Dan's not here. Because, mm. oh, I love the guy. I love Dan a bit. Mm. We're Jesus. using his mic right now, so... Jesus Christ, he is annoying to be around when you're trying to pitch something. Because, like, oh, jeez, does he cut you off? Does he, does he get in the way of your pitch? Oh, I don't know anybody else like that. Oh, fuck. Now, when I do it, it's a running bit. When Dan does it, it's just fucking annoying. Like, he'll just, he'll just, be, like, he, you'll be trying to get through something, and he'll just be Did like... Did you even listen to the Joker episode? Which Joker episode? The joke one where I tried to pitch my Joker movie. No, I did not. Uh, I can't Listen back to that and then continue this point. I, I can't remember what you're talking about. Anyway, get I don't, to your I, Are you trying to insinuate something? Well, I'm not insinuating anything. I'm just saying you're an interrupting little bitch, and on that Sorry, what was that? Why were we talking about that? I was just about to that. Let's not talk over each other because it sounds terrible. Also, let's never talk over each other in any more episodes. Okay. All right, Kingsman. One thing first. Holy shit, we're half an hour in. Get to the Kingsman. Knock, knock. Who is there? Interrupting sheep. Leave. Just leave. All right. This is bad form. Shut the fuck up. All it's right. sheer lunacy. God damn it, Martha. I told you to get rid of that sheep. He just keeps making puns. Martha? How do you know that name? Sorry, um... Who's the guy from Waterworld again? <laughs> Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, right. The 90 year old man, Kevin Costner, who may or may not be alive. He's a. Okay. Fine. So. I am now going to do my Kingsman pitch. I'm going to give you five minutes. Go. Okay. So. In the wake of. Also, um, I don't know how Kingsman 2 goes because I haven't seen it yet, so I'm I just. I have. So I'm just, well. I'm just going to assume the statesmen don't turn evil. It, this is in my version yeah. of it. The statesmen don't turn evil, and the kingsmen are not completely wiped out. So, in the wake of Kingsman 2, after Julianne Moore's little rampage, again, still haven't seen the movie, after Julianne Moore's rampage, the kingsmen have been rebuilding. So they've, uh, they've rebuilt the old base to be bigger and better than ever. It's two stores now. But they're still underground. <laughs> One of the it's it's a a, a tailor's that leads underground. Oh, no, you get off the tube and there's another tailor's under there. Yeah, it leads underground to another tailor's, which leads underground to the real Kingsman base, oh, which is unblow upable. Yeah. Give me ten good men and I'll blow her up. Yeah. Give me ten good men and I'll, I'll impregnate, impregnate the, the bitch. bitch. I love yeah. that line so much. Sorry, go on. Anyway, uh, big ups, Mister Mister Braun of the Blackwater. Anyway, so. They've been recruiting from all branches of British uh, military and secret service to rebuild the Kingsmen. They've been recruiting from the SAS. They've been recruiting from the SAS. They've been recruiting from MI5. The SAS. Did you mention the SAS? They've been recruiting from the SAS. Uh, they've been recruiting from the British intelligence. I think there's only one branch of British intelligence now, like MI5 and MI6 were, requi were retired. What happened? Why did, why did they start at 5? Is there no MI one, two, three? I MI4? I think yeah, there is. I think, but oh, um, right. it I'm was just... dur during World War Two. MI five was like homeland, and MI six was international. Ah, I think. Well, well, I think. Does it just go by level? It's like if you're MI one, you're just like a police officer. Like MI two, you're like I, a I, guard. I couldn't tell you, but anyway, um, I think they're just called like the SIS now. Right, 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 anyway. Sorry. And the SAS, but they've they've rebuilt. They're bigger and better than ever. The Kingsman, and because Kingsman training just seems yeah. to happen to people, it's really like, easy. We never see Eggsy get any yeah. combat training, but he's able to do all that fucking flippy shit. Like he actually, did... no, Eggsy was in the military though. Well, yeah, he was in the Marines, but he left. They don't teach they... you how to be a fucking ninja in the Marines. They just. Teach... I'm sorry. Are you insulting the Marine Corps? 
Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, oh. the British Marine Corps. Right. But anyway, no, I'm kidding. Um, but anyway, so there's a new ultra elite branch of the Kingsmen. You know how the Kingsmen are the most elite guys in the world? Now there's an even bigger one. They they form within Kingsmen, and they're called the Countrymen. The Countrymen wear like they have like scarlet linings on their coats, mm. and they're like they're like the Kingsmen, but they're even better somehow. And they're led by Mr. Tom Hiddleston. He's a real nice guy. Okay. And Tom Hiddleston, he's like a, he's leader of the countrymen, and he's just really nice to Eggsy. But he's also, he's supposed to sort of remind you of Narrington from the first film. He's oh, like yeah. really suave, sophisticated, yeah, and yeah. nice. He's basically the same character, except he's younger. He's Tom Hiddleston. And never shuts up about his brother either. Yeah. He's got this older brother, he never shuts up about him. And he's from the SAS, probably. So, Eggsy... He, he like he gets an invitation to join the countrymen, but he stays behind because he remains as Galahad. Galahad, okay, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. He remains as Galahad as part of the Kingsmen, and the new Arthur is let's just say Colin Firth. Okay, um, I'd say that probably happens in Golden Circle. They make a joke about the fact that they have two Galahads. Okay, well, uh, let's just say that Colin Firth becomes the new Arthur. So anyway, there's a new threat. Threatening. Wait, wait. How 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 threatening is this threat? On a scale of the Simpsons movie to Die Hard, how threatening is this? It's a Die Hard three. <gasps> it's wait, of... wait, wait, wait. It's a Die Hard with a vengeance. It's Die Harder. Wait, what's a good day to Die Harder? A good day to Die Harder. <laughs> Isn't that the fourth one? No, it's the sixth one. <laughs> a good day to Die Harder. <laughs> Goodest day to die hardest. <laughs> That's the finale. Yeah. Anyway. That's just Bruce Willis just taking his own life because anywhere he goes, terrorists just chase him. Kevin Costner is uh, leading a splinter cell of the statesmen called the Minutemen, which is not a reference to Fallout. It's, it's, a, ref a, it's a reference to Watchmen. No, it's a reference to the American War of Independence. Literally. Which was inspired by Watchmen. Continue. Of course. That was it. They were reading Watchmen one day and said, <laughs> That's a pretty good name for a revolutionary group. So anyway, I thought the movie was better. No, no, the comic was tipped out. My God, we're going to war for this. And I know, like, it, you'd be kind of in danger of like getting copyright infringement from Fallout, but because they're secret agents calling themselves the Minutemen yeah. and obsessed with American history, they would have laser muskets. Okay. Fine. They would have muskets that shoot like blue laser beams. So anyway, they attack the White House, kill the president, who we only ever see the back of the head of. Okay. Per Kingsman 1. Oh, okay. They kill the president, and uh, they steal nuclear launch codes. Oh no. But here's the thing. Oh no, they got the nuclear dudes. After, after the Cold War, the nu uh, the nuclear launch codes of the American... America. The American were, America. Yeah. Was split into two halves, and the other half was held in a military base in the Rocky Mountains. Ooh boy. This whole bit... I, I feel a finale coming on. Oh no, halfway point. Oh fuck, so, come on. Please, speed up. There's a halfway point climax. The countrymen and the um the kingsmen go and um they go to the place they uh kill Kevin oh, oh and Kevin Costner's whole plan apparently is to nuke Britain. He wants to fire a, a shit ton of nuclear Why? missiles. We don't know. He just seems to hate English people. He's going around and he's obsessed with the redcoats. He keeps saying, well, "This is the only way we have to defend ourselves from the redcoats. This is the only way this we is can." The first time in Kingsman where we've had a villain who's just evil for the sake of being evil. Yeah, but he dies at the halfway point. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Oh, right. So Kevin Costner is going around. He's saying, "We have to nuke them before the redcoats like the redcoats destroy us. We have to defeat the redcoats. Mm -hmm. I'm a fucking minute man." He's going crazy. Okay. So anyway. They go to the Rocky Mountains, there's a big Rocky Mountain showdown, and they kill Kevin Costner. Yeah. And as he's dying, he grabs Eggsy by the coat and just fucking quotes George Washington or something, I don't know. Mm, right, yeah. So Eggsy goes back, and he's like, ah, job done. We've stopped the... Hang on a minute. Merlin? Yeah? What happened to the launch codes? You know, the ones we got from Kevin Costner and the ones in the Rocky Mountains? Like, what What actually happened? Oh, um, I, I thought... I, I thought you had them. Wait, they're not, they're not with you, but... I like to imagine he's, like, falling on his jeans, like, oh, bollocks. Spoiler alert, the countrymen are evil. <gasps> so, so, Tom Hiddleston, he's he's coming out, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm fucking evil, and now we have access to the American, oh, and, spoiler alert, British nuclear silos. We have all the, these nuclear ICBMs. And uh, XD goes, oh, so what's the deal now? You're going to conquer the world? And Tom Hiddleston smiles, and he goes, no, of course, we're not insane, Eggsy, we're not going to conquer the world, we're just going to take back what already belongs to us by right. 
we're not going to take the world. We're just retaking the colonies. Their plan is to rebuild the British Empire, but this okay. time, this time, no one will rebel, no one will secede, and the empire will last a thousand years because all of the vassals of the British Empire will have the threat of nuclear Armageddon hanging over their heads because the countrymen now have hundreds of nuclear ICBMs. Oh. Using Buckingham Palace as the lodestone for the largest empire the world has ever known, but this time it shall never fall. And also, Scotland can't get independence. So. <laughs> Just gotta get that in there. The countrymen will take over every branch of the British government and then rebuild the empire. America, Canada, India, South Africa, everything. Oh god, they're coming for us as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> god oh. damn right. Oh fuck, we're the first one. So, Eggsy fights Tom Hiddleston and gets his ass handed to him. Because, How? I'm sorry, one sec. Because Eggsy is fighting like a kingsman, but the countrymen are just like kingsmen on crack. They're... Yeah, but Tom Hiddleston looks more like a meth addict. Yeah, and I feel fucking, like a well-placed Colin, Colin Firth looks like a dowdy aristocrat. Yeah, but Colin Firth's got a bit of bulk to him compared to Loki. Ah, uh, yeah, but training something. A something, light something. breeze could kill Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> okay, I think you're kind of exaggerating how skinny Tom Hiddleston is, but anyway. Tom Hiddleston beats Eggsy's ass, so Eggsy and Merlin and Arthur escape, and they're like, shit, what do we do now? And the finale sequence of the film... Okay. Eggsy, Eggsy realizes, I can't fight them like a Kingsman because they know how to fight the Kingsman. I'm not in the time limit. Uh, I can't. So Jesus. I'm going to I'm gonna have to fight them like a bad boy Yardy. So he has Merlin make a, a tracksuit, a Kingsman tracksuit for him. It's his tracksuit from the beginning of the first film, but it's bulletproof and it's got gadgets. And he's wearing a snapback with a razor-lined cap. Please tell so, me there's a, uh, a moment where he's running through the same housing estate from the first movie, but everybody can parkour this time. Yeah, because they're all the country. Yeah, everybody's parkour. So, finale fight sequence of the film. They go back to the pub from the first film. And... Set to the song Lyrics by Skepta, there's a fight sequence where Eggsy kills all of the countrymen by fighting them with a combination of Kingsman tactics and bad boy yardy scumbaggery. So, like, he, he glass bottles one of them fucking yeah. nut shots. Yeah, exactly. And we're going for a hard R, so I want a bit where he, like, he full-on smashes a pint glass on someone's head and you get, like, shards oh. of glass shards of glass embedded in skin, blood pouring down, like, screaming. Okay, my final question on your Kingsman pitch. What is the name? Because it needs to be Kingsman the something something. The Secret Service, the Golden Circle. Hmm. The Redcoats. I was going to say, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Or The Lost Empire. Kingsman the Lost Empire. That would kind of give away the twist. Yeah. But... Alright. Yeah. That's a good pitch. I, fucking, I, I really enjoyed that. Hmm. Except the killing off Costner earlier. I wouldn't have kept Loki as the villain. I would have kept Costner as my villain. And also, here's here's your one little bit of homework for today. Apart from go watch Internet Comedy Etiquette and watch Malcolm in the Middle. And Google how old Costner is. Listen to the song Lyrics by Skepta. And just listen to it and imagine to yourself, how would this go with a Kingsman-style fight scene? And that would be my free bird. Is that not the song that they play in the first chase scene? When he's no. driving the car? Oh, no, no. that's Bonkers by oh, Dizzy Rascal. Oh, you're right. I'm completely wrong. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, just imagine, you know, it's parkour, tracksuits. Bottling, nut shots, people getting like kneecapped, and it's and like it, it leads out into an alley, and eventually it ends with a confrontation with Tom Hiddleston, and it all wraps itself. Okay, up. this has been but a long, drawn out episode. So imagine I'll be... that scene during that song. I'm gonna give my pitch because it's been a long enough drawn out episode. I'll bang it out fast. Okay, so ah, we're only on forty minutes. Yeah, we're doing well then. Okay, so picture th we got a couple of these to still shoot. Picture um, it's been two years since the Golden Circle. Iggy's been out of the game. He said, "You know what, Colin Firth's character art." Galahad, you know what, Galahad? You're great, you trained me well, but you taught me something about myself. And that is the fact... I can't shoot dogs. That I cannot shoot dogs. And the fact that the reason I can't be a Kingsman is because I care too much. I've got people I genuinely care about. I just I, feel too much. I've got my mum, got my dog, got my Swedish princess girlfriend, got the lads. I like how he sounds like Ringo. That's <laughs> my British voice. So either that, Alfred, or fucking Charles Xavier. Anyway, so fucking, he's like, I'm out of the game. I'm done being the Kingsman. I'm out of fucking game, mate. So Colin, right. Firth, Colin Firth's Kings Manning around himself. He's the Kingsman. <laughs> Nobody else left. It's just him. It's just him as Arthur, the Kingsman. And all of a sudden, a new threat appears in the form of, wait for it, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. What? Jeff Goldblum. 
That's gonna be a bitch for listening back. It's... Look at look at the way that came up on the the screen. Just yeah. No, no. Anyway, Jeff Goldblum appears and he's like, "Okay, I'm gonna find out which is Jeff Goldblum's a scientist. He's like, I want to create the perfect dinosaur. Spy. No, dinosaur spy. The perfect soldier slash spy. I didn't interrupt. I didn't interrupt you. Let me inter- don't. It's a Velociraptor, obviously. The Velociraptors. Velociraptors come up later. He's a genetic scientist. It's the and perfect we're... assassin. <laughs> No, it's not. It's genius. It's perfect in I've seen Jurassic World. I know what you're talking about. It's not. The last raptor is the ultimate weapon. <laughs> no, a drone strikes. Anyway. So he's like, okay, I've got to get information and study all the different pseudo-kingsmen. So like the Chinamen, the Russiamen. <laughs> they're not called the Chinamen. <laughs> like they are called the Chinamen. Uh, the, the Chinamen, the Kingsmen, don't the Statesmen, the, the Paddiesmen, the that, Aussiemen. That's also right. Don't call... No! <laughs> the Bushmen. Fine. That's better. Yeah. So his plan is to kidnap one from each organization, put them on an island, and Hunger Games style have them fight them out, while all his computers just analyze their movements and their fighting patterns. So he can imprint that onto a drone. An unstoppable fighting machine. The ultimate spy. And he's like, okay, don't worry. If you kill these other guys on the island, I'll let you go. So it's ten different types of Kingsmen. The Aussiemen, the Paddymen, the fucking Chinamen. Oh, yes. What's your question? Um, aren't spies supposed to be inconspicuous? What? Have you seen Blade Runner? Fucking replicants are super inconspicuous. So the, dr- the drone is a replicant? Kind of. Okay, I was, I was just picturing a fucking eight-foot-tall robot man. <laughs> and he's just like, an eight-foot-tall robot man just walking into a gala in like a suit, just going, Yes, hello, foreign dignitaries. I am also a human. Manners make it the man. I have many karate moves. Oops, shouldn't have told you that. I am just a gambler. He's just at like at the table from Casino Royale. Just, Hit me. We're playing poker. Hit me. <laughs> Shake and not stir, please. And he's just pour, he's just pouring alcohol into his circuits, and he's just shorting you. He's, I'm here to exterminate. I mean, sadus. I mean, how are you doing? <laughs> I have not been programmed with the rules of poker. Hit me. So Galahad teams up with Channing Tatum to try and hunt down the secret organization and find the island that Iggy's been taken to. But Iggy is a pacifist, unwilling to kill these. What? What now? Is he keeps Ch- doing this thing where he puts up his hand. None of you can see it, but he's doing a slow hand raise. Is Channing Tatum a robot? Somebody might be a robot. We'll Ooh. get to it. So they're fighting on the island. They're fighting the Paddymen, the Bushmen. I like to imagine the Paddymen have like a sweet hurley that they pull a sword out of what now that, okay the hurley thing's a really cool idea is jeff goldblum a robot not everyone's a robot <laughs> we'll get to it is colin firth a robot <laughs> shut up okay i'm the robot oh i have come to podcast oh anyway fuck hit me Egg- he's a pacifist picture like old man logan said he's not willing to kill so he's trying to take these guys out and he ta- teams up with russell crowe like uh, just fighting around the world. <laughs> fighting, around fighting around the world. Russell Crowe, who's got sweet... That was a loud squeak. Sorry. So he's, he's got... one of the Bushmen. Yes, the Bushmen, who pulls out sweet, magnetic... Boomerangs? Boomerangs. Oh, yeah. He throws them, and like Captain America's shield, he can pull them back to him. Razor tipped. He's the Captain Boomerang we all wanted. He's got a didgeridoo that when he blows the end of it, it shoots out grenades. And, of course, he's a master of hand-to-hand combat, as he's mm. spent so much time fighting around the oh, world. Wow. So they team up, and he's like, boy, why aren't you killing people? And he's like, oh, I just haven't had the opportunity. He's like, you bloody better get back to killing fuckers, you cunt. That's a spot on Russell Crowe. I'm pretty sure that's... That was a squeaky-ass floor. Yes, it is. So they're fighting around the world, and they're like... Fighting <laughs> around the world. So Chad and is being trained by fucking Galahad to, to, to be a proper kingsman. He's stunned with the cadence. So he's done with the oh. statesman. He's going to be a kingsman. He's got to teach Channing Tatum. Does he's, actually come back? He does. He's fighting around the world. Oh, oh, yeah. He's stuck he's, on oh, this yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. He's, he's studied by Jeff Goldblum. He's he turned island. into a robot soldier. Yes, exactly. And then when it's... Or is he already? Oh. And the big... Finally, Eggsy snaps, and they take everyone down. Is he already a robot? No, he's not already a robot. God damn it. And the reveal is he gets out, and he goes to Jeff Goldblum, and he picks him up, and he's like, why, why did you do this? And Jeff Goldblum turns to him, because life, life I'm a, finds a way. He's like, what are you talking about? And all of a sudden, he starts glitching. He's like, what the fuck, what the fuck's going on? Wait, wh- where'd the island go? And he looks around, and Russell Crowe's gone. And the Chinamen are gone. 
and the, the, the Tsar's men are gone, it's the Russian version. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden he looks up and he's underwater. Uh-huh. In a big glass dome. Fucking picture we haven't done this in a Bond movie for a long time. Underwater base. That's why they couldn't find him on land. It's an underwater base. Okay. It's all been like imagine a simulation. Yeah, imagine the holodeck from fucking Star Trek and he's been fighting these droids. And every other version, like Russell Crowe, they're all in these little rooms fighting robots, but they don't know it. They're just being projected other people to fight. Huh. That's how he's been getting their combat techniques down to a T. So they come out, and they're like, okay, we're done with this. Galahad turns up on the scene with uh, Channing Tatum, like, we're here to free you, Eggsy. And he's like, I don't know what it's like in the outside world, but fuck it. It's better than this place. So they get all the other different versions of the Kingsmen. So it's 12 different types of Kingsmen now. Like, we've got to fight our way out of this. Jeff Goldblum is like, you see, you could, but I'm not going to let you. Because if you get out, well, we couldn't be having that now, could we? He's like, the finish is in. my plans to make my perfect robo spy. You know, he's Mr. like, Mr. Robot Bond. You know what? It wasn't. Uh, it's not as. It's not as complex when I say it out loud. I'm just building a robot army. <laughs> I'm just picturing it's 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 Daniel Craig, but his voice <laughs> is one of those text to speech softeners. <laughs> Shake and not stirred. <laughs> Welcome to the casino royale. <laughs> That's not even a line. He doesn't say that. I'm certain he says that. It's one of the concierges. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So Jeff Goldblum walks Vesper. out. Vesper. Vesper. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum walks out with an army of robots behind him, and it's twelve Kingsmen versus two hundred robots, and the two hundred robots all have their fighting ability, but. They all turn into shitty looking Jeff Goldblums. <laughs> and then picture the Matrix fight scene <laughs> with Neo versus all these Smith. But it's just Eggsy and the Kingsman fighting a hundred different shitty versions of Jeff Goldblum <laughs> in an underwater base that's filling. It's just hundreds of voices going, Life, uh, uh, life uh, finds a way, way, life, life, life finds a way. Uh, uh, Eggsy fucks up one of their faces and it looks like the fly and another one looks like him from Jurassic Park. He's just got the shirt open and all the chest it's hair. It's just a different Jeff Goldblum performance. <laughs> they gotta fight their way out. And just as they get out, they think it's all over. They think they've won. And all of a sudden, Channing Tatum turns. And his body is oh, a robot. Listen, listen. Channing Tatum's chest splits open. He slits in down the middle. Picture the Scooby Doo movie where Scrappy comes out, and it's been Jeff Goldblum in a robot suit the whole time. And he climbs out of it, and he's like, "Shano or a fucking whiskey, take them out." And Jeff Goldblum turns back, and the final fight is Galahad, Jackie Chan, who's the Chinaman in the version, and um, I'm stealing that from Max Landis, and fucking Eggsy. Fighting off against Channing Tatum. Channing Tatebot. Channing Tatebot, who's got like a Mega Man style arm where he opens up his fist into a cannon. Fuck, I don't know why, but that's just funny in my head. But eventually, he's defeated by the one thing that no man can overcome. What? An umbrella. Russell Crowe. So the final shot of the movie is Russell Crowe fighting around the world, is what he is. Channing Tatum has Eggsy on the side of the boat, he's choking him out, he thinks it's over. Russell Crowe's hand comes through his chest. He gets up on the boat and he's fighting around that boat around the world. He just throws his hands over. He goes, oh, you call me, Khan? You call me, Khan? Fighting around the world. And just like throws an uppercut that takes Channing Tatum's head off. Oh, you better be. I was in the nice guys, but I ain't one. Oh, fuck. So in the end, he's just like, okay, Eggsy, you can blow. Alright, Eggsy, you can go. I'll fight this fucker. And the final shot, it cuts to ten years later, and the boat's just been doing laps around the world, and it's just Russell Crowe fighting Channing Tatum's robot over and over. And neither of them get tired. No. That's the end. It's called Kingsman, The Lost City. <laughs> Subtitle, Fighting Around the World. Uh, no, wait, no. Kingsman... Oh, I need the something something. Kingsman, The Robot War. No, Kingsman, The Island. The Lost... Kingsman, The Lost Island. Kingsman, The Lost World. Kingsman's got Jeff Goldblum in a Jurassic Park! Kingsman, The Angry Red Hole. 
<laughs> I think that's what this one's about. I think that's what the last one was about, am I right? But I'm... <laughs> oh, wink. Oh, wink, wink. And on that note, I've been Jack. I've been Dan. No, I've been Dan. This is We've established on the show in the continuity, this is what Dan sounds like. Oh, I've been Freya. And I've been Rhiannon. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, yes, it is me, Ophelia, <laughs> friends. How are you doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks guys, have a good week. Wonderbar! Come back next time.